Let's walk our way down through the spray room and walk through the sliding doors which opens up into a huge workshop. So this workshop is around nine meters long by about four and a half meters wide. Hi everyone, welcome. It's Ryan here from the London Craftsman channel. How's it going? Today's video is all about an inside view or a tour of my workshop spray room area. Um, so what we're gonna be doing first, we're gonna be going over the entire space, showing you what we have. And afterwards, we're gonna be going over each individual section of both spaces, telling you a little bit about it and why I've designed it that way. So we're nearly at the point where this workshop spray room is 100% finished. I just wanna do a little tool station here for sharpening and for grinding and for sanding, pillar drill. Um, but other than that, I think we've literally nailed it. We're down to a T. We've got everything exactly how we want it and how we feel we can get wardrobes, alcove units, window seats, all those sort of pieces out and made pretty rapid. So this space has been optimized and designed that way. And today is all about showing you that, giving you a little inside view into my space and my workshop. So if that floats your boat, you're curious, you want to find out more, but stay tuned, watch to the end. I hope you enjoy. Nine meters long by about four and a half meters wide. We've got floor to ceiling of 2.5, so we can stand up full sheets of eight by four. What we have now on the left is literally nothing. It's open wall space, and that is basically for storing all our jobs. We like to store all our materials sheet materials up on walls because I think it's the most efficient way of doing so. Um, we did recently respray and renovate the workshop and we decided to leave this rack here. So this rack here has been here since day one. I built this right there. Beginning, we are building a French cleat tool wall over there and a little bit here as well where we'll be storing lots of hand tools and power tools. So let's move around. Again, we've got nothing here. We've just got a walkway really so we can walk around the bench. Sean has um, been machining some components. He's been edging. So we're just using that as storage at the moment. Like I said before, we have renovated this just, just recently. So we're not storing anything up against the walls just yet. We're leaving it two or three weeks to cure completely. It's eggshell on the walls and ceilings. Anyway, we built this ultimate workbench here. It's a bit chaotic at the moment, but this is the main part of the entire space. Everything revolves around this. And this has taken a good um, few months to build and it's nearly there. We have just a few tweaks left to do, just like tweaking the extraction, putting some doors and tweaking the scissor lift for the chop saw that pops up. But ultimately, this whole bench is fantastic and you can work three or four people on it easily. Um, so yeah, that's a fantastic part of the workshop. As you can see, we've got tons of wall space because we do go through, maybe you might have 30, 40 sheets of MDF in all different shapes and sizes up against walls. We might have four or five large jobs in here where we need to dot them around everywhere in piles. So wall space is a must for us. We've got these machines out. We don't use them very regularly, but ultimately they were living here and this is where the tool station and the new tool station might live. We might get rid of this to make a little router um, table section here, but we might keep this and we might, well, we are keeping that, but again, we are making some space over here. We've utilized this area, so when we built this spray room, this here where it says Tottenham. Um, this was the original wall. So we opened it up and we decided that we'll make the workshop a little bit bigger and use it for storage. So we've got racks in that little alcovey bit there for squares and rectangles. And over here, we've got a rack for strips. They're gonna be for trims and offcuts that we don't wanna throw away just yet that we can utilize, um, cut bits up on the CNC machine and the laser. Moving in. So this is the new addition, this spray booth and all the doors do open back all the way. The only reason that this, these set of doors here have stopped here because I've got a little dust catcher in there. Um, but ultimately there's four doors there. They will slide back to that rack, which will give us a nice open space. This was built about three years ago now, I believe. And it is five and a bit meters wide by eight meters long. Again, it's got the same floor to ceiling. It's all OSB. I love OSB. And the floor is protected brand new floor underneath. Um, just because of the overspray and any paint that might be trailing around. And it's a lovely space and then we've designed it with skylights above the workspace and another skylight over there. One either side to open up and let as much natural light in 
on both sides of the spray, spray room. We've also got a window here and a window here. So it's very, very bright. If I turn the lights off, it's not too bad. It's usable still. Again, over here, the spotlights and it's all white and nice and shiny. If I turn the lights off, really, really nice and bright. Talking about lighting, we've got spotlights. We've got about 25 in here and the same amount over here. All LED lights, cool whites, the brightest ones I can find. Let's go and turn these lights on again. I guess you could say this room is slightly less bright because we've got yellow orangey walls because of the OSB. But get, then again, we've got light floor. Um, whereas the other room is the other way around. We've got a yellowy OSB floor but with white walls, but there's more of the OSB on this side. So we've got these mobile racks. We've got one here and we've got one here. We've made these ourselves just out of some offcuts and poles that come with a cheap 15 quid gazebo. They've been working brilliantly for uh, three years but over here. We got the racks. We didn't initially want to use all this space. The rack was only up to here when we first built the space, which meant when we opened up the doors, that's where the rack starts on the other side. You know, so where that rack is there, that is where the rack starts on the other side. So when you open the doors, you see completely in. We have since then been buying more materials. We bought in a heart two packs of birch, so they need to live there. And we also buy a bit more stock now, so we we bought, we built another rack here. So one rack space there, and we've got some wall space over on this side as well. On this side here, we've got our spray booth, and this is the main part of the spray room area, I guess. And um, the overall size is about 3.6. We've got nice light above. We built a division, a dividing wall, to give us more extraction power from these fans to create a smaller area make them work a bit more efficiently and also to give us more storage because we've got tons of paint and varnishes. And here we used to have two sprayers, but we use them for storage as well now. There is a sink under there, but we found we don't use that. We use another cleaning facility outside. So it just means I'm for now, I'm storing tools and parts and hand tools and all that sort of stuff in here for now. This is the heart of the spray room, I guess. Without these, I wouldn't be doing any painting whatsoever. I'll be back to the old days where I was rollering. And this is the whole reason I built this area in the first place. I built this because I was rolling outside on ladders, on trestles, and it took a whole week to paint one wardrobe. I thought enough is enough, let's build this place. And these two are fantastic, two airless sprayers. Over here, we've got more racks and therefore backings. Again, we just leave as many of the walls free as we can because once they're machined next door, they come in here, they lean up against these walls. Can you see this boxing in up the top? That is a beam to hold up the ceiling. So it works fantastically for storing more bits. Boom, 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 boom. And again, on this side, boom, 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 boom. Do you like the sound effects? So that is fantastic for storing also. And we can lean smaller bits here. This column works well, so when we're using these spray racks, one will go this side, one will go that side. So that is both spaces, workshop, spray room. I couldn't really tell you how many square meters it is, but it's quite a lot and it's nice and open and light. Right now, what we'll do is go over all the specs and tell you a little bit about why I've designed it this way. Okay, so Open space, like I said, for storage. We've got double doors here, so we can bring in large items in and out, sheet materials. We've got skylights all the way around, four skylights. We've got about 25 or so cool, white, high-powered LED spotlights. Everything is sprayed white in here, eggshell, and we have lacquered the floor, quite shiny, to about 40% sheen to reflect the lights. Move around, more wall space, more wall space. We've got loads of light coming in from these windows. You can see we use all the walls for storing here. And again, on this side, we've got these little boxes which were here from Day Dots. And I think they're quite cool anyway. I made them all different variations of depths and widths to look quite cool. Um, but they will get neatened up and power tools will still live here. The idea is we're gonna have a tool wall over here, French cleat tool wall, French cleat tool wall. So that is something to come. And up here, when we built the space, we put the fuse box in the ceiling. And again, moving on to the reason we did that, is to keep um, everything flush and everything as neat and tidy as possible. And that's why we went for spotlights also. So when we're lifting stuff and carrying stuff, we're not smashing lights off the walls and nothing is getting in our way. Time for more wall space. And this workbench here is a godsend. We absolutely love it. The more we use it, the more we love it. And let's go over it. It's 1.6 meters wide. It's about 850 high. It's 3.6 meters long. 
We're not far off a full-size snooker table. I think we're only 200 mil in width less than a full-size snooker table. I designed it so the table saw is incorporated in it. This was our old sit um, table saw. And I designed it so it fitted nice, nice and neatly within the bench itself. That is a cool feature. We got a little rip fence here, which is made from birch. It still needs tweaking, um, a way of clamping it to here, but we built it with this little lip. So it runs off this and it can clamp off this edge. And that seems to work really, really well. Um, we made it also so the side of the table saw, um, this can slide on it still. And that was designed, so it was bolted to the bench. And this is all the existing parts from the table saw. I think it was a SIP 01332. We've got drawer space at the bottom, which we haven't utilized yet. And we've got the table saw in here. Bit messy at the moment, still need to tweak that switch. And here is the main um, extraction for the workbench itself. And we've got it on valves. And these valves are ball valves, I believe. Um, and we've got four of them. And that did go to a cyclone. We had a cyclone in this drawer. So this drawer was our dust box and we had a cyclone on the top, but we have to tweak it. For now, we're not using it. The valves still work, um, but they go straight to the hoover, which I'll show you in a bit. So over here, we've got a router, and that router is um, for the Jessam router lift that we have here. We haven't started using it yet. Um, so we will box that in eventually and connect that to the valve so we can have a, one of these ports to suck out the dust. So we've got a couple of ports. We've got two ports coming up the top. And I quite like this design. We've designed it so the suction here and suction here is one for the left and one for the right. And we're using the CTS hoses here. Um, they simply just push in like so. So if we wanted the right extraction working, we would just go to this one right power tool and push that down like it is. So that's on at the moment. So when we turn on a power tool, it will turn on the hoover because underneath the bench also, we've got these cables, power extension leads, and they're all plugged into the hoover effectively. So whenever you turn on a power tool, the hoover will turn on. So when you turn on the hoover, obviously your power tool, you just got to make sure that you have the right valve on. You've got that set like we have to the right power tool. And when we turn that on, any power on this bench will then, will then turn on that hose. We can have two valves on at the same time, which they work very well and we do have two CTS hoses and they both work well at the same time. So seeing as we're going anti-clockwise, let's walk around. So we've got a planar thicknesser, uh, not been used for a while. It's a Makita planar thicknesser, as you can see, it's just covered in dust. We've been so busy renovating this place, some bits have been missed and not looked after or used. Um, but it does work well. This hasn't got extraction as such. We do need to work out how we're gonna get the extraction for that. On this one here, we've got a compressor. Over here, we've got the chop saw, and that chop saw is on the scissor lift. So we've got a little hatch here, and that hatch will lift up, and then you pump the um, scissor lift a few times, and it'll come up, which is fantastic. Works really well. We've got tons of storage, and these are all push release. They're huge as well. Look how deep they are. They're about 750 long, something like that. We utilize as much space as possible. Remember, everything here is out of birch ply nothing other than birch ply, 18 mil or 25. Tons of space which we haven't used. While we're on this side, I'll show you these little holes. And these holes are for little dowels, so when you're resting your work in on the side. I'll show you that in more detail on the other side. Let's walk all the way along. And um, this is the main side that Sean mainly works on. And you can see the system for the T-track and the clamps working very, very well. And also the dowels. So the dowels are for that reason, so you balance your work on it and you just slide your clamp where you want it. There you go. You can slide them, you just have them, you just have as many in there. You can have four, five, six sets in here. Um, he's got three sets. So when he's edging with the Vertex Edger, he'll just set up three or four at a time, just um, to be as efficient as possible, get that clamp in flip position, lift it up. Don't have to over tighten it. And that system is really fantastic. If I, was to if I was to give you some advice on how to build your bench, T-track and little holes on the side, they work fantastic. So moving on to the storage here, we are gonna change that to something a bit more powerful. I think sort of like a 100 mil opening in there. We're finding if we don't have a bag in there, 
we get a lot more power from the extraction, but then again, we're just ruining the hoover. So we have to put a bag in there and then it blocks up really, really quickly. So we are gonna adapt that. But remember that hose goes all the way to the ball valves on the other side. And obviously the power comes off of that. So we've got an extension that goes to the other section as well. And then all our power comes off of that. So when we turn on a power tool, it effectively turns the hoover on and then it turns your extraction on at the same time. So we've got one of those either side. And again, we've got more storage here. We've got two big drawers we decided to have here for larger stuff, fillers, maybe a power tool or two. And we use these for hand tools at the moment until we're building the tool wall. And yeah, we, we're loving it. It's fantastic. It works really, really well. And what that does is frees up all this space. We don't need a whole bench for a chop saw, or a station. And um, we just have this that does everything. It's a router table, it's a table saw, it's a station for cutting up on, with your track saw. It's a place for clamping and edging and storing and planing and chopping and blowing out or pinning. It's got everything and everything is to hand. Everything is quick and easy to get to. And I, I, you know, I wouldn't go back on it, put it that way. Back in the old days, I'll show you um, a few pictures up right now. We had a couple of benches. We had one here and one here and one floating around and it was really old and it was crusty and it needed updating. I got a bit of inspiration online once where I saw, I think it's Poesson um, Woodworking and he made these benches using birch, um, machineless joints. So you just make up the joints to mortise and tenons just with your construction methods. And that inspired me to make this and we made it as big as we could for the space. Like I said, it does everything. Table saw works fantastic. Clamping system works fantastic. And if I was to give you any advice in what to take away from this, it's the dog holes, it's the track system, and it's these little holes on the sides. Moving on, I think that's all I can tell you about that side of the workshop. Over here, we just got some machines that we don't use very often, and we are gonna have a station here. I'm thinking a little station that is in the center that's gonna be for a pillar drill, it's gonna be for a sanding area, and it's got, gonna be for a sharpening area. I don't know whether I'm gonna keep this because I don't use it very often, but if I don't keep it, I will like to have like a little router station here in that also. And I'm trying to incorporate this bandsaw in it some way by taking that base away and having that on top of the bench maybe. It will be a bench which is about two meters long or 1.8 and it will be split in two so you can move one section into this area. Maybe connect it up to the extraction here when you need it. Um, but ultimately it needs to look like it's built for this space. So other than these little workbenches here that are gonna live here, we did pinch a bit more space when we built that spray room over there. We did extend the workshop to the sliding door side, can you see? So from where it says Tottenham Hotspur all the way across. We've got some racks here and we just did um, some sizes. I think it's about a metre or 900 and we got about 700 and 700 here. We tried to make it as tough as possible using CLS 3 by 2s and some 18 mil for the shelves to make it big and bulky and sturdy. Didn't want to make it too deep. We made it about 350, 400 deep, but anything wider can still fit on. But you can see we've got tons of offcuts and they're too good to throw away. And we do sift through this. They are little lifesavers, Aaron, every now and then. We've got birch, OSB, MDF, a bit of Alchromat in there, and some solid um, mahogany and uh, some other softwood. Um, what else? Over this side, we've got the strips. So when we want trims, we've got tons here. We've also got some six and nine mil MDF. When we're making different type of shaker style doors, we can use those. And when we're ripping up packers for our site um, kits, then we can just use some of these offcuts. They're far too good to throw away. While I'm in this section, shall I show you how these doors work? Okay, they used to live all the way back behind that rack here, all four of them. This whole space is about four point something, 4.8, I can't remember. And they are full size sheets, so about 1.2. I haven't cut them down in the width, I don't think, maybe by a little bit. Four does cover the entire space. So we've got track systems up the top. I think we use Saturn, cheapest ones I could find that are pretty decent, top hung. And we created the tracks at the bottom using plastic profiles. We did it ourselves. We didn't use guides. We knew that they had to be slid in perfectly every time to over and over and roll over with the wheels. So we just had box section of plastic and we cut the box section in half. And then it was basically like a little tray. And then we just put the floor around that afterwards, the OSB. So that one stops there. And then this one here, we'll slide to the next. At the top, we've got the little pelmet that shaped and again the track to suit 
And these are brilliant. They're closed most of the time because I'm spraying in there. Sean is in here making dust. That's generally the gist of it. It cuts off. There is a few little gaps here and there, but it is very, very good. We've always got fans on in here, but it does divide the space really, really well. And if you were thinking of dividing your space up, then some form of sliding door is the way to go, I think. And back open again. I quite like this view because you can see the whole entire space and you realize what space you've got. So they are a fantastic addition and it opens that space up. We're just utilizing these steel beams at the moment for our storage, leaning things up against them. Let's move over here. So we have got windows here letting in tons of light. We put some twin slot um, racks here with 600 long arms. We don't use these particularly very often and they were meant for backings. And the reason is they're 600 is if you know, you can store anything up to about 1.2 and they just just about perch on there. We put timbers across that supports a backing while it's drying, but we don't use them anymore. I find that I spray backings and I just lean them up against posts on their edges. So they're, they're there just to show you what we've got. We've got a couple of benches here and we utilize them for paper wrapping, we use a lot of paper. We've got a kerosene heater. So when it's cold, we will heat paint up and have this area heated with a diesel kerosene heater. Key here is light, as you can notice. Again, two big doors to get things in and out more storage that we were in the workshop. They've come over here to store Osmo oils and stuff like this. And we've got this area here, which is for all our paint equipment. We've got storage boxes here that did house two 390 mini sprayers, but we haven't used them for a while. They're storing other equipment, tons of paints, varnishes, thinners, cleaning equipment. And there was a sink underneath that bench. It's a floating bench but um, we don't use it. We clean elsewhere at the moment, get rid of our waste paint elsewhere. We're just storing a few um, tools just for the time being, but we always stock some paint. We stock mirrors here and we stock hanging rails over here. It's a little bit more dust free. Over here is the sprayers and we're using the 595 Graco and the 695. This one is generally for whites. As you can see, we've got the white contract silt. And then here we've got a bluey color and that is the way it is. We try not to put darks in there and lights in there because it's quite hard to get a dark out of a, a machine and it'll, it'll always tint the white for a while. Um, but they are fantastic. They're connected up to some 110 boxes that are in there. And then over here, we've got the switches for our extraction. So we've got two dials, the two black dials, our variable speed tiles for our fans. And then we can turn the sprayers on from that switch also. So that is our power for both our, our Graco Ella sprayers and our fans. So we've got two 450 mil flat fans. These are fantastic, had them three years and they work very well. Um, we've got a little bench with splayed legs and a turntable so we can spin our work and spray at the same time. And as you can see, we've got two hoses here um, that come off. Spit bucket, um, sacrificial pieces to spray strips. And if we wanna just protect our turntable, we've got some Corex. Um, this booth is covered in Corex, by the way. So it's easy to be, easily to be cleaned. If you wanna see a video of me cleaning it, which was only the other week, quite interesting. I'll put a link up the top. We've got this grid. So any overspray falls to the floor and it's less likely that we're gonna traipse it through. We've got a beam at the top for hanging up lightweight bits and pieces. And of course, we've got the skylight there for more lights. Moving around, tons of twin slot racks and they could be configured in any shape or form. And we've spaced them out at around 600 because our studs were there when we built, which works fine for us. When we're spraying smaller stuff, we've got these little hand-built racks and I've spaced the arms out around 250. So any smaller bits, no worries there. We use this wheelable rack. It doesn't look pretty, but does the job. Um, that rack on the wall is about 3.6 meters long and we did stop it short with the arms. We have put another slot here and we do store some more of these twin slots and some of this more foam protection underneath. So if we need to extend that rack because we're spraying a lot more, we can have it further, but we need to get in and out of that rack. It's best of both worlds. We can get into the rack or we can remove the twin slot. You know, we can move bits around. To protect all our work, especially if we got two-sided stuff, We've got these pipe protectors, um, especially if the piece is heavy, we need to definitely protect it. They are literally just pipe insulators. Big old rack, it was initially from there to there. So when you opened up all those doors, you can see right through from this point. Since then we bought more material because material prices are rising and we just bought a pack to stock up. Plus we, we, we store a little bit more stuff now, more MD, MDF than we ever used to. And see here, they just lay there. Another wheelable rack. And this beam that you can see above me, it's quite handy because we can lean stuff up against it all the way across. 
and all the way across. We've had five or six large jobs in here, maybe 300 components in the workshop and the spray room, and it handles it because we've got wall space and we've got stacking space. You never let stack anything flat, it just takes up too much space and it's a nightmare to pick one up. Stacking, you can slide them out and you can stack up lots in one go, prime example. Really, really easy. If you wanted to pull one out, it's very, very easy. We protect the floor and Corex also in here because we've got paint products, as you can see under here. Under here, we'd have a little spillage every now and then. So this Corex has done the job. And I think we're nearly there. So the basis is racks. Make them nice and neat and tidy as possible. Um, and to make them as efficient as possible, big pieces, half sheets, full sheets, small components. Think about that. We've got another rack over there, which is long pieces mainly. Very, very easy to get to from your spray booth across. These are all on wheels, these little wheelable racks. I can move them to the bench and spray bits. Boom, 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 boom. Not a lot of work in. Spray booth works very well. It's very, very crude. It's just covered in plastic and it's just powered by these two sprayers and these two Amazon fans. Um, we've got some storage over here, which keeps things nice, neat and tidy and organized. You can get to whatever you want and when you want it. And over here, we've got wall space, more racking if we need it, the heater, open space for storage and uh, moving materials around and ultimately space to move. Sliding doors, great. Divides the two spaces up. It's a godsend to have that. We wouldn't be able to do the work without these sliding doors. Got rack space and this void here. Like I said, it will work for us soon with our stations, which is gonna be for grinding, sharpening, drilling, and these two machines possibly. Loads of wall space, loads of wall space. Open space here, which we don't tend to use. Um, when we have got stuff that we make, like one-off pieces, bespoke pieces, units, dressing tables, we can use this area to store if we need to. And the main part of this workshop, the bench, we couldn't do without it. It is an absolute godsend. Overall, it's lovely and bright. It's lovely to work in. We've got speakers in the ceilings. One, two, three, and one in there. So we have music all the way through. I was saying that one of the speakers is above the spray booth. We've got music throughout the whole workshop. It's a lovely environment to work in. Really, really love this space. If I was to say anything, I'd say concentrate on getting a good spray booth, as much space as you can. Nice amount of racking, decent fans. And over on your workshop side, you need a lot of space for storage. Keep it nice and bright and a nice workbench. So like I said before, this is all set up for me. It works for me. I've designed it exactly this way. It has evolved over time from being just this small workshop to getting double the size for the spray room. And then it's got brighter and brighter and brighter and we've adapted it, evolved it with a bench and open space and a few more extra tools. And it is nearly exactly how we want it for making furniture. It could be changed in an instant. If I wanted to start making doors and windows, I might need a few more tools here um, or machines. But I don't think I'd change much else. This, this here is a godsend, this bench and the spray booth, they would never change. Maybe just a few extra tools. So that is my workshop and spray room. I hope you enjoyed seeing what I work in and seeing how we both um, use the space, Sean and I. We love it, I love it, I'm very proud of it and it works so well so efficiently and it's a perfect space to work in i couldn't have asked i couldn't ask for anything more at the moment if you've got any questions fire them at me i'm happy to help send some pictures in to me and i can post your workshop up on my insta other than that hope you enjoyed the video took something away from it take it easy good rest of the day ciao for now